Warning, we are about to spoil the film Mandy. If you haven't seen the movie and you plan on watching it, leave now and come back later. But if you have seen it or you just don't care, then please stick around. We honestly have nothing. <laughs> we have nothing, audience. You hear that? We're sorry. I'm sorry to end movie month without a joke. <laughs> That's the best we got. Yeah. Is that still book out of print, by the way? Hello, everybody, and welcome Hi. to Cinema Roulette. Hi. You ruined my flow, my rhythm. I've been doing that all month. You have been, mostly. Yeah. Yeah. Lucky number seven was at least the most tamed. No, it wasn't. I love that episode already. That was fantastic, honestly. <laughs> oh, the <clears throat> chaotic energy that we don't have today. <laughs> it's great, like... Come on, camera, I don't know how well you can pick this up, but it's like super gray out yeah. at the moment. Out yeah. of our casino, in case you're watching yes. the YouTube version, it's we have video <laughs> feed, and I just showed totally. this window here. Yep. I am very, very sore from last night because I was jumping around being silly, and not only did I cut myself way across my arm Jesus here. Christ, you hit two... S That's deep, holy shit. Yeah. That was literally just from like a corner table. Yeah, see, if you were taller, you wouldn't hit the table. That is true. It's not, I can't help it. Oh, if you were just be tall, though, Cameron. Short-ass pieces. <laughs> and then I jumped, like, headlong into a couch divider, so... Uh, and you, this is why I don't take you to karaoke. You can roll that clip if you want, but it's, it's, no. it's not pretty. I'm not taking that time. I'm taking the time. Depends on who gets the episode. That is true. Rock, paper, scissors, no. Uh, but, all right. Um... Mandy. Is it weird in here, or is it just you? That's right, everybody. Today it is Mandy, the crazy fucking trippy ass art house sci fi horror movie. It's not really sci-fi. It's not really sci-fi. This is more horror, but it, 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 I don't even know what to describe it as. It's such art a, house horror film. Yeah, it's such an odd amalgamation, and but it is so cool. Or so, art house revenge film. One yes, too. very much so. And it, it is very satisfying. The thing about revenge films is, you know, they have to be satisfying at the end. And this one does deliver, thankfully. I was trying to think of a punchline about revenge movies. Got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> So I'll let you take it away with the synopsis if you if you want, unless you have something else to banter about. I, I was going to say that this is the last of movie month. It is. We're finally at the end, and the last is it Mandy. It is. This week has gone by way too fast. That, well, it would help if you didn't sleep till one. Well, yeah. But. <laughs> also, work didn't help. Yeah. Like, yeah. honestly, we'll probably get more done in july when i'm over by you yeah if you're able to get the entire week off yeah i'll i'll talk to them about it. i'll be like if even if i can't i'll be like can you just get me as little as possible <laughs> that's real life stuff stuff yeah. that has already happened according to you because yes next is december but we'll talk about that later we'll talk about that later in fact Excuse even me. though we don't know what's going on in december because we're in june yep timing it's weird yeah you know what else is weird? The movie Mandy. It is. What a segue. Good job. You know, our segues could be smoother if we didn't always point out when we did a segue. But it's so fun to do that. It is. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. This synopsis won't take long because it, it... We're going to say this multiple times. Go ahead and drink every time we say art house film. But this is the closest we've gone to an art house film, it, I think. It is, really, I think. Yeah, I don't think there's anything nearly as artsy. Like, especially the first third of the movie. Yeah, the fir the slow ass bird of the beginning. Yeah, but there is a couple that lives in the woods, Red and Mandy. They are a happy couple. Mandy goes out for a walk, and some a group of people in a car see her, and one man specifically falls in love with her at first sight. Turns out this man is a co cultist. Copist. Copist. <laughs> Thanks, brain. <laughs> a cultist named uh, oh, Jeremiah. I, it is Jeremiah, yes. Yeah. Okay, it's either Joseph or Jeremiah. Yeah. They're always named one of the two. It's Jeremiah, because I made the joke. I'm like, why is every creepy cult leader named Jeremiah? <laughs> why is it always a J name? I don't know. 
It sounds biblical, I guess. Mm-hmm. Oh, God damn it. What? Nothing. Okay. Just ignore that. Okay. <laughs> Jeremiah Gumball. <laughs> That was what you were thinking of, wasn't it? Yes. So you told you said to ignore it and then said it anyway. Yeah. Cinema roulette. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. I just thought of our intro, but it has the Disney. Doo, 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 doo. <laughs> Hi. We're here again. We are here again. <laughs> I love it. Okay. This is actually uh, the second. No, wait. I'll get to that after the synopsis. <laughs> uh, but Jeremiah sees Mandy and is like, damn, girl. <laughs> He, he needs his big titty golf girls. Yep. And tells his cult members like, yo, get it. <laughs> yeah. Get me that ass. Thanks. Basically. And they go, yes, Jeremiah. <laughs> so then they call demon bikers who, or demon, no, sorry, biker cenobites, whatever you want to call them, mm. summons them as like, yo, here's a jar of drugs. Go get us this chick. Okay. And they do that. Yeah, there's like a big old jug and he downs like half that shit. Yeah, it's like a mason jar of the the drugs, which I'm sure is fine. I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, no, I'm sure nothing will go wrong with that. <laughs> I'm sure his life is completely normal after yep. that. But uh, they, they go and get Mandy. They tie up Red with barbed wire and pump Mandy full of drugs and try to basically get her to join the cult. Jeremiah gets naked in front of her. Uh and tries boasting about how he had a music career and how he knows everything yep. that God does. And she laughs in his fucking face. Because she realizes, wow, you're just a pathetic, fragile human being who's trying to make themselves feel superior to everyone else. Recalling the other Nicolas Cage cult cultist movie. Kind of. The first part I took from the second part was... I don't have to segue off that. Stop fucking with the wire, man. Yeah. <laughs> You okay? <laughs> I, sorry, my brain immediately just went to the Emperor's New Groove joke of, you ruined my groove, man! And then it throws it out a window. Yeah. Uh, so, so much good physical slapstick. I love the slapstick in that movie. Oh, man. That's great. Not Anyway, back to dark things. Yes. Uh, so they decide, well, Jeremiah decides for Mandy being a <laughs> piece of human shit, it, according to him, burns her alive in front of Red. Yeah. And then just leaves him for dead, but he peels off enough skin to break it, to get out of the barbed wire handcuffs. Mm -hmm. uh, he goes, has a bit of a cry, and then thinks, yeah, I'm going to murder everyone. <laughs> yeah, straight up. It's like, well, they're dead. <laughs> goes to goes to his buddy, gets a crossbow, makes a fucking badass axe. Yeah, like he literally forges it, like from steel and shit, so... <laughs> Why does a woodsman know how to be a blacksmith? I don't fucking know, but it's neat. Yeah. And then he goes on a re revenge spree. First, going after the uh, biker Cenobites. They are actually people, and we find out they are... Uh, they had a special type of LSD made for them that was supposed to drive them crazy, and it kind of worked, but they keep taking it. Yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, he gets... Well, he tries to attack one of them, gets captured, kills two of them, and then kills the final one. But before killing the final one, he finds a jar of the stuff. Well, after doing a line of cocaine. Mm -hmm. uh, tries a fingertip. His brain fucking explodes. Like, he sees visions of his, like, his face melting off and shit. And just <laughs> uh, images of colorful hellscapes. Yeah. Mind you, he took, like, dink. <laughs> he took a... A pinky tip of the stuff. The dude before was drinking the jar. He was like chugging it. Like. To, to quote Deadbeat, what was his life even? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, has he just been like a drug induced haze for the past three decades? Like, my God. He doesn't know what grass is anymore. <laughs> exactly. Just reality is nothing but shapes and colors. Yeah, exactly. I wish they talked, but it was all just simlish. Like they've that lost. That would be amazing. They've lost so much humanity. They can't yeah. even speak anymore. Just that. Surprise! Surprise! I love that because they do kind of speak this weird tone that everyone seems to understand. Yeah. For some somehow. <laughs> um, Nicholas Cage goes and visits the person who made all the LSD after killing the Cenobites. 
I just keep calling them that because they like, uh, they find pleasure yeah. in pain, and they look like Cenobites. <laughs> they really do. The design is very Hellraiser. You guys, never mind. Um, but he goes and meets the person who made the drugs. We meet Lizzie. Lizzie's fantastic, yes. but Lizzie goes free. They have to let Lizzie go. Yeah, it just makes sense. Yeah, perfect <laughs> sense. <laughs> uh, the and the person who made drugs tells him where the cult is because he's like, eh, yeah, he. The, that seems fair. Yep. And then Nicholas Cage goes and he ki- he fights everyone in the cult, kills Jeremiah by crushing his head between his hands, and then drives off, seeing an image of his dead wife, making a creepy smile and driving into the night. Yep. On a very weird looking hell, because also the world is all we see a big shot of the world and like the stars are weird and everything's red. And- yep. Like there's two big planets in the sky and shit. I can't remember the Night Vale joke. Damn it! <laughs> what, like the big planet that everyone sees? Yeah, of immeasurable size. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's Mandy. Yes. <laughs> okay, where the fuck to start here? Shit. Because <laughs> I, I just want to say, too, this movie isn't really one where, like, you can say, oh, well, uh, it... let's see if I can warn. It's a very simple plot. It's a mood. It's a mood. Like, that's basically. the best way to put it. <laughs> yeah. Like, it just has some just cool, creepy sci-fi. I always don't like you see. I don't know why I keep wanting to say sci-fi. I think because of the imagery of the yeah. planets and stuff, or the way the sky looks, it makes it feel very sci-fi. Or maybe yeah. even all the neon. Mm-hmm. That's probably it. So, but yeah, it's not really a movie that's like plot heavy. Like you said at the beginning, it's very art housey, very slow. They're like talking to each other, giving random monologues, stuff like that. Yeah, so. if you're gonna watch this, because it does have some fantastic, insane Nick Cage moments. Oh yes, yes. But do be warned, the first third of this is a super slow burn. Yeah. <laughs> but when it picks up, it fucking picks up. Oh yeah, like shit goes down fast. <laughs> Once Mandy burns, it that's the start of the races. You, like, yeah, is. I will give Nick Cage this. The grieving he shows mm-hmm. feels very real, but also there's a level of dark comedy to it, maybe just because I'm an asshole. Like when he's in the bathroom yeah. chugging a bottle of vodka, just screaming in anger. Yeah. Well, that's just a classic Nick Cage freak out, isn't it? There's entire compilations on YouTube of him doing that shit. So. Uh, he actually had a screaming coach for that scene. Did he really? Yes. <laughs> Was most of it improv or that bathroom scene? Uh, I couldn't find anything that said it was, but he did have a screaming coach for it. That's amazing. Specifically a screaming. I love that there is someone with the title of screaming coach. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they are the most soft-spoken human beings. Yeah, like, right? Like, if you extract it, it's like, okay, now when you yell, just, just remember that. Now it's just like, I'm just like, okay, Mr. Cage, now yeah. you see here, we need you to just kind of up the graveliness of the scream. He, like, talks like George Lucas when he gives instructions, but, like, <laughs> what he yells is, like, kind of like this. <gasps> I just need you to scream like, ah! Yeah, pretty much. Uh, but yeah, Nick Cage is great in this movie. And he specifically requested to be in this movie, yeah? Yes. The director did approach him and was like, and wanted him to play Jeremiah, actually. Mm. But Nicolas Cage said no, he wanted to play Red. Uh-huh. A year went by, apparently. And then they met up again due to Elijah Wood. Ah! And... Because I guess you don't know, Elijah Wood has a production company now. Uh, so. sp- Spectre Vision. Yeah, Spectre Vision. So, yeah, he, he since he kind of took a backseat to that, he kind of just started producing things. He's made cool shit like this movie. Yeah, a so. lot of cool horror movies. Yeah. But anyway, sorry, go on. Um, and then Nick Cage, I think he divorced his wife at the, or got divorced from his wife at this mm. point. And they talked about, him and the director talked about going through the grieving process of losing your wife, which may, convinced the director to make him the main character. There you go. <laughs> Which, also hearing that, I, I wonder about some of the symbolism. Uh huh. Like, okay, there's a chainsaw fight in this movie. It's rad as fuck. Yeah. This movie's metal as hell. <laughs> but like, Nick Cage has a dinky chainsaw, and the Arju gets like this eight foot fucking beast. Yeah. Which, a Barbie is like, is that supposed to be symbolic of him feeling lesser inferior. to other? Yeah, inferior to other men who hit. Because 
is supposed to kind of cover the entire thing of losing your wife, mm -hmm. both in the death sense and just divorce, I assume. Yeah, cause, so that really helped with his performance and stuff. So. Yeah. Dang. And I'm like, is that supposed to be kind of being jealous of someone else she could get with type mm -hmm. deal? <laughs> it's definitely, it's definitely a dick symbol. Like the way the oh, dude pulls yeah. out the long oh, one. Oh yeah, it's definitely like, yeah. That's Absolutely. a penis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, they're not afraid to show it, too. Like, when Jeremiah, like, opens the clock, you see full frontal male nudity. He so. didn't want to do that scene originally. Really? Uh, yeah, he actually said that one of the... The actor originally didn't want the scene at all. Because mm -hmm. it was supposed to be Jeremiah jacking off in Mandy's face. Uh. And he said, can we cut that scene? And the director was like, yeah, it's not too important to the plot. Mm -hmm. But then he did feel it as they were doing more of the movie, he felt like that was more in character to at least be naked. But he did not yeah. want to do the jacking off. That's fair. I think that's fair. <laughs> what? Because there's something going on right now where an actress doesn't want to do a kiss in a movie. And everyone... And, you know, because it's a fucking woman. It, yeah. It's a fucking woman. The internet has to be a bitch about it. And, like... Wow, why would you take the job if you saw it in the script? It's like, actors ask for changes all the time. You're just mad yeah. because you know about it. Honestly. Like, for real. If you're not comfortable with something, you can ask for it not to happen yeah, in exactly. the script. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Or, like, even, like, have a body double or something. Like, have someone else do it. Yeah, there's ways to get around it. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, we had to make a whole news story out of it. I didn't it hear about that shit. Get people angry. <sighs> oh, that's bullshit. This is probably now months dated, so whatever. Well, yeah. Hi. We already said we're filming it in Jul uh, Jul June. June. June, 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 June. What month is it, Cameron? June. Good. Um, I'm trying to think where to fucking go here. Because there is just a lot to talk about. I'm just confused on the order to cover events. <laughs> yeah, so, um... Fuck it. Uh, let's talk about the cinematography. <sighs> Every single shot in this movie you could probably take and put on a poster. It is one of the most gorgeously shot movies I've ever seen. Yeah, just the use of the bright colors yes. at all times. Yeah, is there the, an orange in this movie? I think maybe at the ending shot with the planets was kind of orange. That was kind of orange. That's true. And well, obviously when the church is burning because that's got fire. Yeah. So. But there wasn't much blue. Like blue there orange wasn't much blue. Dude. Like there was kind of blue in there, but. <laughs> it stayed very much on the warm colors, like with orange. Yes. With reds and pinks. Yeah. And I, I guess lighting and the cinematography have, have to kind of go hand in hand. Yeah. Because the, 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 you know, the, the it, this has like super harsh like colors colors like bright red bright blue like it is very vibrant especially after nick cage does the drugs and we go into the whole you know thing so yeah like at the beginning it's shot more normally and colors are more natural but then as it goes on it just as gets... the cult comes more into it the colors start to get more and more harsh yeah because <laughs> like jeremiah the way to show that mandy is getting stuck in his mind is the image literally repeats in his brain over mm -hmm. and over and it's like this and mandy's just walking around this harsh red light yeah or like even when like they pump her full of drugs the first time like it goes just all blue and shit like that yeah and the then, bright like, pink and then everyone's talking like this with like layered voices like they have a normal voice and then they have this really deep like evil voice that they're like overlapping with so and the delay of the image of like because you see like anytime someone moves there's a streak of them basically yeah and one of the creepiest images is when Jeremiah's up in the camera talking. There's, like, a big close-up, and he's talking. But then, like, his face kind of freezes a bit on top of the image. But you can still see his mouth moving underneath it. It was Mandy's face superimposed on his. Is that what it was? Yeah, that's why I was like, why is his face looking weird and mouth not moving? And I realized it's Mandy's eyes over ah, his face. Ah, that's so cool. <laughs> it, it's so unnerving it's to look such at. such a creepy ass effect. There's just something about it like that. Uh, uh. <laughs> I think because it fit too perfectly, it just became this uncanny yeah. valley thing to look at. Exactly. Whoever did the composite image did fantastic. Like, Jesus. <laughs> but yeah, the. Would you say this is in vain of kind of like Suspiria and whatnot with how much color is used? Oh, in absolutely. It? With how much color is used, yeah. <laughs> It's like, oh, we could shove everything in shower, but what if everything's just perfectly lit, yeah. but with pink light? <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> Hell, it, uh, during that scene where Mandy is 
drugged up, the pink is so overexposed, it makes their faces, like, flat. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> like, it reminds me of an effect um, from, like, an old sci-fi movie. I think it was called The Angry Red Planet, mm -hmm. where, like, everything else was in black and white, but once it went out into the Martian landscape, it was, like, this huge, like, oversaturated red. So. That's fun. Yeah. <laughs> you know what else is fun? Gore. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. The gore is insane. In this this, movie. <laughs> this movie's metal as hell. It is. It's metal as fuck. Like, once the weird Cenobites and creepy cultists come in, like, especially towards the second half when Nick Cage is fighting them all, it just becomes fucking metal as fuck, dude. <laughs> I mean, the last cultist he murders is... He punches... He beats them up. They get caught on fire, fall to the ground. He chops their head off, their flaming head, Finds a cigarette on the ground and then lights it with the flaming head. <laughs> it's pretty badass. Just to look cool. <laughs> this is the second movie we've seen where Nick Cage uh, does something to a villain's head. It, true. And it's also one where he fights Poultice. Yeah. Uh, we, we didn't do an episode on it yet. We'll probably do one in the future, but yeah. we watched Drive Angry this week as well. And... <laughs> Mandy's just the art house version of Drive Angry, it, and you can't convince me otherwise. It is. It is. <laughs> yes. I'll, I'll talk about it later because I don't want to have to put a spoiler warning for yeah. Drive Angry. Yep, yep. <laughs> but I'm starting to think that statement is more true than it's, I meant it to be. Oh, man. But yeah, the. Go the blood and gore is just fucked. Like, Jeremiah's head getting crushed oh, and the yeah, eye popping eye out. Yeah, but you can still see it, like, on the nerve that it, it's on us. Uh. <laughs> it gets fucked, yeah. and it's awesome. Yeah, or even, like, when he slits the guy's throat and it just pours all over his face. Like, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, when the coldest tackles him to the ground. Yeah. He just has a metal dick, by the way. D dude, yeah. <laughs> just has, like, a metal knife. Just strapped to his cock. Yep. Why? Reasons. They're fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> Probably been on drugs since, like, the 80s, so. <laughs> uh, the movie takes place in the 80s, so, yeah, probably. Actually, since the 60s, so probably. That there is. you go. <laughs> yeah. I always I always forgot that it took place technically in the 80s. Yeah. So, because it's very, like, there's no, like, big hints that it does. It's just kind of shot normally, so. And it's just to get, but give a reason for the sort of techno-y music and... Mm. Uh, the colorful visuals, because yes. 2000s were not allowed to have color. I, I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Band. Band, yep. Um, but yeah, the mu actually, that's a good segue. Music's great in the movie, too. <laughs> oh, the music is wonderful. Yes. So atmospheric. Very much so. And then, like, when Nick Cage likes fight fighting people, it does start to go, like, a little more metal in places, or, like, a little more, you know, get a little bit, be uh, like, bopping, and it's like, yeah, get them! <laughs> Yeah, it knows what it... The film knows what it wants to be, which is really nice to feel. Yes. It wants to be this slow, atmospheric thing, but also it wants to be cool. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, hmm. We already talked about the acting performances, I think. Well, we'd, like, touch on but yeah, everyone does a great job. We already talked about Nick Cage, but yeah, Mandy is good for what she is, uh, given, so... <laughs> for or the few scenes she's in... Yeah, it's funny how the movie is called Mandy, but she's in it for not much of the movie. Legend of Zelda. <laughs> yep, <laughs> exactly. Um, the guy who does the main cultist seems like he's having a lot of fun with the role. So Yeah, he he seems to do a Nick Cage performance. Yeah. <laughs> who can they? And at first I made the joke, well, he's out Nick Caging Nick Cage at the moment. And you're like, don't worry. <laughs> It'll come. <laughs> we can fix that with drugs. Yes. <laughs> so... Also, just a random thing. I don't know anything about the director's other movie other than it's surreal. Mm -hmm. But also, um, Beyond the Black Rainbow takes place the same year as Mandy. Ah. So, I don't know oh, what happens in that movie and if it connects in any way. Yeah, we haven't seen it. So, we just know Sorry. the title and that's about it. So, <laughs> um, Apparently, it's more surreal and art housey than this movie. That I also know. Mm-hmm. I do wonder about the ending, if it's supposed to imply anything. Yeah. Because we are told earlier that um, the chemist made the LSD to drive the bikers insane. Mm -hmm. The problem was they enjoyed it. Yep. <laughs> and Nicolas Cage took a bit of it, and while he's driving away, one, he's crazy enough to see his wife sitting in the seat next yep, to him. Yep, that is true. And also, like we said, the sky is completely messed up we see yeah. two planets it's bright orange even though it's nighttime yep 
And I was like, wait, were they on another planet the whole time? Or, like, what the fuck's going on here? Like, uh, did the world get fucky wucky because the weird cult shit? Like, what? Yeah, was the cult right? Or yeah. is Nick... Nick Cage could also just be have gone completely mental. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> maybe he was dead all along. No, I'm not going there. No, no. <laughs> Hello there, every internet fan theory. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, person who wants to get popular with some random theory. Yep. You, you've upgraded to non kid shows. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not much to do. I passed gas. I apologize. <laughs> rude. It was rude. But, um,. Yeah, it's again. It's just a really hard movie to talk about. So, yeah, it. That's the problem with art house movies. It's like it looks pretty. What yeah. It, it it does very much keep its mood uh, of cool, but kind of relaxed in horror. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't put it too far into horror. Not I, too far. Yeah. I didn't find anything like scary in it. It's almost yeah. It's almost like kind of like a Mad Max type thing. So. Yeah, I think it leans more towards revenge movie than a horror movie. Yeah. <laughs> still really fucking good though, and still highly recommended. So. Yeah, it's still a lot of fun. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Is that about it? I honestly don't know what else to say. Yeah. So. Um, but. Get, well, in that case, then that kind of wraps up movie month. Yeah, as I say, we don't have a wheel to spin or anything, so... And we don't know what the fuck's next, but December is the, uh... Is gonna be our last month... month of, well, yeah, it's the last month of the year, then we take a break in January. Yep. Uh, we don't have a Christmas episode. We may... We'll probably do a ranked... V, like, uh, re recap our final spin of movie month wheel at some point next year yeah when we need to fill in <laughs> yes <laughs> we we like doing that after the episodes are out in case we're like oh we should have mentioned this in the episode mm-hmm. but yeah <laughs> uh, yeah besides that uh thank you for watching movie month thank you absolutely thank you for watching or listening to movie month so <laughs> Listening is just watching with your ears <laughs> it is it is so uh yeah that's it. It's over. <laughs> Sad confetti. Yeah.